Well, thank y'all for coming out, being with me to, tonight. It's good to be here. I get energized when I come out here and have my Bible open and hopefully bring something that will be edification to the body of Christ. I've been sitting here for the last five or ten minutes just nothing but praying. I've been asking the Lord for mercy in the situation that's going on in Afghanistan. There's a lot of innocent people, no doubt, that are staring death in the face. And I'm concerned, but I'm also glad to know that God is in full control. Um, a lot of people don't believe that. A lot of people will go and say, well, you know, God is not in full control. That He lets man be somewhat in control. No, I think that in the situation like this, that God is in full control. He's allowing all of the trouble and the things that is going on. He's, he's allowing the mistakes. He's, he's allowing the, uh, um, bullets in the foot, so to speak. Um, I'm reminded when I watched the Andy Griffith show, how that Barney had shot up a many a bullet in the air and on the floor of that jail of all the times that he shot the bullets off when he was trying to show somebody how to use a gun and he would end up letting the shell go off. I think that's a, a little bit of the mentality that we have in Washington, D.C., is we got too many people that don't know what the heck they're doing at all. And it's showing. It's definitely showing. But I want to try to keep this on a level of where you get something from this tonight. I'm not out here to just entertain, to make you laugh, or to be angry at politics. God knows I could be on here for the next hour and just tell you my feelings, but and, you know, it wouldn't be no more different of feelings than for somebody else to come out and do the same thing. But when you got the Bible open and you got the Word of God in front of you, you want to use what thus saith the Lord. You want the Lord to anoint the words that you're saying. And, and I, I keep that in mind every time I come out here. I am in the book of Galatians chapter one. And I'm looking at verse number eight is the verse that I've got picked out. I've been studying on it a little while. I'm going to read you the verse and then we'll talk about the verse. It says, but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Now, Paul was doing the writing here, and I always like to break down the verse in segments and try to sort of talk about it little by little. It says, but though we, well, if you look back up there at verse number two, Paul's mentioning the fact that all the brethren that are with him, they're all speaking basically with one voice. This one over here don't have a particular gospel. That one over there don't have a particular gospel. I'm talking about the ones that is with the Apostle Paul, the ones that Paul has trained the ones that Paul has been with. Um, Paul is confident 
of what the men that are with him are saying the right things. And what he's saying is, but though we or an angel from heaven. Now we know that the angel of heaven, we know one thing about the scripture that God is not the author of confusion. God is not going to send the angel from heaven to come down and preach another gospel that Paul didn't preach. But what he's saying here is, is though we, talking about we as a group of people, and he's including himself in that we, but though we or an angel from heaven, so he's basically sort of like nailing down everybody. The we is including the people that Paul was around, the, the people that Paul was with. And then he includes the angel of heaven. See, Paul knows that the angel of heaven is not going to come down and bring a false gospel. That's what's happening today in a lot of our world today. We have a lot of people that are bringing the false gospel. They're bringing a prosperity gospel. They're bringing the flesh gospel. They're bringing a gospel where you got to endure to the end. They're bringing the gospel that you got to live per a perfect life. You got to live a sinless life. Well, you know what? Whoever's going to live a sinless life ain't going to be ready for heaven because heaven don't have nothing but a bunch of sinners in heaven because the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And Paul even said that over in the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 23. So there's not going to be a whole lot of perfect people, but who is he referring to here? But though we or an angel from heaven, now listen, this is what he's getting at, preach any other gospel. Now, the gospel that Paul was preaching is the gospel of the death, burial, and resurrection. We find the gospel in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 through 4. That area right there, then four verses, shows us the actual gospel message is that Jesus lived, that Jesus died, that Jesus rose again, and that he is on the right hand of God the Father. And Paul was the one that preached the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there's only one gospel. There's only one gospel. So what is he saying here? If by though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, than that which we have preached unto you. Paul's not, Paul's not trying to be boastful here. When he says that we are the ones that has preached the gospel and don't listen to anybody else, there was a lot of people that was going around during Paul's day that would be changing the gospel. They would make the gospel say a little bit of something that they won't said. That's the reason that we have so many religions today. We have the Baptist church. We have the Methodist church. We have the Nazarene church. We have the church of God. We have the full gospel church. We have the, the church of Christ. We have the Jehovah Witness. We have the Mormon church. I mean, we have the assemblies of God. We have the non-denominational churches and and. We've got every kind of church that is known to mankind that a good majority of them are not really preaching the word of God because they all sort of guilty of taking this verse here and taking that verse there. Some people might would even accuse me of 
of the same thing. Well, you're just taking certain verses that you like. Well, maybe so. I guess it would be possible that I could come out here and have a one-sided gospel. But the one-sided gospel that I have is, number one, that you can't earn your salvation. You can't work for your salvation. You can't live good enough to get it. And you can't uh, live good enough to keep it. It's not about works. The Bible tells us in Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, it's not of works lest any man should boast. Some people want to work for their salvation. They want to try to see if they can impress God so that they can earn it. Well, when you try to earn something that God said was free, that's where you're messing up. You're messing up when you're trying to earn something that is totally free. And there's a lot of places, there's a lot of denominations out there that some people want to be the Pentecostal church. Some wants to be the non-denominational. Some has got every kind of known uh, uh, religion that there is out here. But, you know... Paul was letting it be known here that if there is any other gospel, it says, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached. Now, that's not to say that another person that was with Paul would be the same message that Paul would bring, but it would be the same focus just i'll take i'll take me as a good example i listen to a lot of preaching i know the way i do it might not be the way the other people do it i listen to people that are so smart that it shakes my head every time i listen to them and i'm thinking lord i'll never be that smart I'll never be that knowledgeable about the scripture. You got to understand the the people that I talk to one on one now, not so much necessarily on the video, but the ones that I aim my message to is elderly people. These are people that are in the nursing home, so you can't bring theology in a nursing home. You can't go and start talking about something that is way over their head. Because if you don't get it into their head and you bring something over their head, they they, they don't get it. They're not dumb people. They're very smart. But you got to keep the message on the level where it hits the side of their head and it goes into their ear and it goes into their mind and they meditate on the words that you're saying. And I found out that a lot of these people that are talking the big words and the big language and and trying to impress and knowing the Greek and knowing the Latin and, and, and all of this, there's a time and place for all of that. And it is. But to the people that I'm talking to, you better keep the message right down here. You start trying to go over their head and you'll lose them every time. You try to read them the Bible more than about four or five verses, you done lost them. They want to be talked to. That's the reason when I come out here and I turn on the camera I turn on the camera to talk to people that I don't even know. I have quite a few lookers, and very few of them ever contact me to ask me anything. But, you know, I just try to be me. I'm not trying to be somebody else over here. You know, I'm impressed with that preacher over there, so I want to preach like him. 
No, I don't want to preach like him or this one over here or the one behind me or the one in front of me. Honestly, I just want to be me. I, because I'm me, I can't be somebody else. Having all knowledge and all wisdom and having all understanding, but yet if I'm on a level that is shooting over the top of the head of some of these people, I'm not affecting them. I'm just up there wearing myself out talking. That's what actually Paul was saying here to this group that Paul was talking to, and he was including his brethren. If you look at verse 2, and all the brethren which are with me. Now, it might go into listing a few of their names if you read on, but I didn't look at that. It says in verse 8, but though we, I assume he's including the brethren that he's talking about in verse number 2, but though we or an angel from heaven, he don't have to worry about an angel from heaven messing up his gospel because God is not the author of confusion. But he's letting this be known to who he's writing to. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you. What did Paul preach unto these Galatians? Number one, he preached that Jesus came from God. He was perfect. Jesus came to do the will of the Father. Jesus was then sent to the cross, and he paid for man's sin so that man would see his need for Jesus in their life. So when Jesus went to the cross and he died on the cross, the Bible says that he was raised from the dead, meaning that he didn't stay in the grave, that they put him in a grave, but he, he didn't stay there, that he rose from the grave. And now today, he is risen. He's on the right hand of God the Father making intercession for people like me. So what is he saying right here in this verse number 8? But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. What does a curse mean? If I come out here and I told you that you got to work for your salvation, then Paul would say, Kenny, you are accursed. If I come out here and tell you that you got to tithe your money to the church or you are accursed, then people's going to use this verse out of context. They're going to take that verse out of context. And before you know it, they're going to change the gospel so it fits their narrative. That's what goes on today in a lot of houses of prayer. We want to keep the people in bondage, keep the people doing what we tell them to do, keep believing the way that we believe. And that's what a lot of these churches do that preach work salvation is because they know if they can keep people locked in to work salvation, that that means that they've got to work for their salvation. The Bible is very clear that I can't work for my salvation. Neither can you work for your salvation. The reason you can't work for it is because God never intended for you to work for it. Now, did he say work out your salvation with fear and trembling? Yes, he did. But it's not talking about the working to get salvation. You work for salvation because you respect God. 
when he says to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, it's basically saying exactly what Paul is saying right here. The message that Paul was preaching is the message that God is ordaining and God is blessing. But if I come up here and I say that a person's got to do this, this, and this to impress God, the only thing I found that impresses God more than anything else, and that's one thing, believing. But yet people want to add this, and then they want to add baptism. Then they want to add this over here. That's where you start having to pay your money. Then they want to start adding this over here. Then you got to show up. Then you got to look dressed up. Then you got to show up for visitation. You got to show up on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. They begin to start getting into the rules of the church. But a person don't even know how to witness. See, they've got the person by by the neck wanting them to do the jobs of the church and things like this. But you know what? They, could they even be lost and not even born again? Yeah, it's possible because it says right here, but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. But yet people will laugh at Paul's words and try to belittle Paul's words. And I done found out that you can't do that. Paul's words was words that God allowed Paul to write the book of Romans, the two books of Corinthians, Philippians, Ephesians, Colossians, First and Second Thessalonians, Galatians, Philippians. I might have already called out some of them. Paul had already wrote all of them books. Philemon, Titus, I think maybe. I think maybe Paul even maybe even wrote the Hebrews. Paul was such an inspirational person that God used Paul to write two-thirds of the New Testament. So which one do you think I would rather believe in? I'd rather take Paul's preaching because I believe that Paul's preaching is pure preaching. Paul mentioned that you get saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. But yet a lot of places will tell you, well, now, Kenny, you got to endure to the end. Yeah, if they was to take that scripture and put it in context, that word endure to the end is talking about the tribulation period. It's not even talking about the church is already gone. When the people left on the earth has to go through, they have to be the ones that endure. But people don't say that because, see, they're trying to twist the gospel. It's like taking a rope on this hand and a rope on this hand and doing this number, trying to twist the gospel into making it fit for them. And you can't do that. That's the reason the gospel here needs to be the straight gospel, because if we don't, then the Bible says you're going to be accursed. I don't want to be accursed. I ain't going to be accursed. I'm going to stick with what the scripture says. Some people will might will say, well, Kenny, you only do one verse when you come out here and speak. Yeah, most of the time, if I only had been given one verse, I believe in tearing that verse all apart and putting it back together again. I believe that what I have said tonight is the word of God. I didn't... I don't have anything written down in front of me other than my open Bible in Galatians 1 verse 8. This is the message I believe the Lord has given me. Elderly Ministry is the website, and you can go there and look me up. Leave a message when you call. Be glad to call you back. This is YouTube. You can go to YouTube. 
and download YouTube. You can go and find the phone number on YouTube. Uh, leave a message when you call. Be glad to talk with you. Anytime that you will need, you need anything or just make sure you leave a message and I'll do my best to return your call. I thank you for watching. I hope that what I talked about tonight will help you. Just make sure that you stay in the gospel that Paul preached. You do the gospel that Paul preached and you right on the middle of the middle of the road. Appreciate y'all listening. Holler if I can help. Thank y'all. Share the video if you would.